Hi everybody and welcome to Heel Heat, our WWE show. My name is George Coles, this is my tag team partner, Blackjack Lanza. Can I at least be Blackjack Bradshaw? He's the best Blackjack of them all. Gary Roots, everybody. And you know, we're going to start off with the uh, the opening of the Monday Night Raw show. We had um, CM Punk and Paul Heyman came out, followed by Ziggler and Vicky Guerrero. And then the uh, tag team champions, Kane and Daniel Bryan, followed by AJ Lee. Basically, they all talk shit about each other, and AJ made a tag team main event for later on that night. Why don't you give me your Teddy Long impression? Can we show what, you even go one-on-one -on -one with The Undertaker? No, the tag team one. We have a tag team player. Oh, no, I just, I just don't feel a Teddy Long right it, now. It's such a horrible impression anyway. No, no, the one-on-one -on -one with The Undertaker is way better. It was a good. It was a good opener for the show. I, I liked it. Um, I'm not really a big fan of talking straight up, but you had a lot of good talkers there, so it did help its cause with that. Yeah, you had all the top talkers in the company there, basically at one time, so it made for a good a segment. Um, I do like the fact how uh, Heyman and Vicky were talking about um, AJ, like past tense, like they're going to get rid of her and take over a spot, which I'd love to see Heyman in charge. Not so much Vicky, because she wasn't a great a talker as... Uh, you know, I seen um, on the internet Paul. today was they did a did one of the backstage videos they do, and Vicky was recruiting the Uso brothers. Hmm. It'd be kind of interesting little pairing. That's just something I want to throw out there while we're talking about it. And speaking of the Uso, Usos and tag teams, they had uh, one of the first matches in the tag team tournament for the number one contenders, Ryan Sin Cara versus uh, Primo and Epico, the clones. It was a solid match. It's a solid match, and, and for two guys that I'm not really big on at the moment, Rey Mysterio, who I think is way past his prime, and Sin Cara, who Which is way over. He's a botch, ma botch machine. Together as a team, I like what they're doing with them. I like their build. I like them working together. I think they make a decent team and a credible opponents eventually for... For Brian and Kane, which I think is what it's going to end up being, is them two winning it. Yeah, unless they do the the players against Kane and uh, Brian, but I, I would rather see it Ray and Kara. And a lot of the reasons they say Kara messes up is because of his mask, because it's harder for him to see through the, the through the shading or whatever you call it. Yeah, he's got a screen over his eyes, whereas if you see Ray Mysterio, you could see his eyes. It, it, it's harder to see out of that, included with the lighting that they use for him. I think hinders him as well. But hopefully, the more the longer he's in the WWE, the more he gets accustomed to the WWE style, and he gets better. I don't want to see the guy fail. I do like the aspect of bringing guys from different parts of the mm -hmm. world. I'd like to see some other Mexican wrestlers come up to, you know, um, guys out there like Vampiro and Conan that came in in the '90s and early 2000s and really tore it up mm -hmm. and gave you real good interest in them. Well, I mean, right now, I mean it. The way he's wrestling, it's like, this guy's one of the best in Mexico. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's Ray's sidekick right now. Exactly. And then, then coming off of that match, we had Brodus Clay versus Antonio Cesaro. I'm really liking what they're doing with him. I like that they they broke him away from Oksana. I thought she was dead weight on his career. Um, from what I understand, they're wanting to push him really big because they're really high on him. Well, just a, basically, it was a smash match, or a, a squash match, too. Yeah, I mean, it was... He, I was not expecting that. I was figuring it was going to go the other way. It, it was a total match to highlight Antonio Cesaro and show you just how strong this guy is. Because he's not the most physically imposing guy, but he's not. he's got more of a a bodybuilder build mm -hmm. than, you know, like He's all natural. He's, I mean, he's, one of, he's a gym rat. Yeah. But he can, he can move. He can wrestle. He's a good talker for being a foreigner. You know, he's got every aspect to be a world or WWE champion. It's just a matter of the push. And I think this here, you know, was the found the foundation of his push. Exactly. It was a good match, and I, I did enjoy the his move. It's called the Neutralizer. 
I really like that he was able to pull it off on a big guy like Brodus. I was very impressed. Some guys, they have to switch up their finishers when they wrestle big guys. I just read an interview with Kevin Nash where they asked him about the Tensai and Ryback match, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And Nash said when he would wrestle a guy like Vader or Yoko, he would beat him with the big boot instead of the powerbomb just because he simply couldn't pick him up. Exactly. And I, I like the fact that he can pull this off. I mean, Brodus is, what, about 400 pounds? Oh, well, you, you have a picture of him next to you. Yeah, and I'm 300 pounds, and he's twice my size. He is taller than me, and I'm taller than George. So he, he's about how much taller than me was he? He's about 6'7", six, 6'8", six, yeah. legitimate. So, I mean, he, he's at least 400 pounds. And the way he picked him up, I was very impressed. And especially with a smile. That's an awkward weight, too. I mean, that's an awkward size, someone of that height. Mm -hmm. But I've seen him in Ring of Honor. He wrestled a, a Japanese wrestler named uh, uh, Murashima. I forget what his first name is, but it's Murashima. He was a Ring of Honor champion for a while. And he picked. He was able to pick him up with relative ease. And he's about the same size as Brody. Mm -hmm. So it really didn't surprise me that much. I just like the fact that they trust him enough to let him do it. Yeah. And then after that, we had the... Uh, Zack Ryder versus Miz. Miz is showing little hints at a face turn, which I think will coincide and, with that movie coming out. And I think it's not just WWE doing it, too. It's actually the fans are doing it because he was getting a pop. It wasn't like a, you know, hey, let's cheer for Miz. Or, you know, it was he was getting a pop and they were putting him in there against Ryder, so they weren't putting him against a, a heel or anything like no, that. They were putting him against some, someone that the crowd loves. And kudos to Zack Ryder, man. I really like what he's done I'm not he doesn't have the best ring work but I really like the kid I like his work ethic a lot well you know the thing is that really makes him special it might sound mushy or whatever like that but the kid whatever the kid doesn't have in skill he makes up for in hard target yeah. and you know and that's one thing that a lot of these guys nowadays don't have I'm not a fan of like someone like, like John Cena it's like but he has a lot of heart for the business and I do respect that aspect of John well uh, he reminds me Zack Ryder reminds me kind of of Tommy Dreamer mm -hmm. it's someone that never really had all the tools that someone you know you look at somebody like Jeff Hardy who has every tool that you could have for to be a wrestler he's a you know a good template or, or Randy Orton guys that have every tool that you would want out of a wrestler that just don't quite have the passion mm -hmm. then you look at a guy like Zack Ryder who doesn't have any hardly any of the tools but he has the passion there and that's what's getting it, it kind of reminds you of a remember the Von Erichs yeah. what was a little one that couldn't wrestle Kind of reminds you of him, you know. He had all the heart for the business, like the bro more than the other brothers did, but just couldn't. Didn't have the, the physical attributes. And then after that, we had what I thought was the, the worst part of the show: oh the show God. versus Big Show versus Sheamus debate, which I thought was terrible. Big Show so clumsy, he destroys the, the table on accident. It wasn't even part of a gimmick. No, I mean it, it was just terrible. These guys. Big Show's not a horrible talker, but they didn't work well to, together. You got Sheamus, which isn't a great talker at all. You got Booker T, which is not a, I mean, right, you know, he's just not a great talker. I mean, he's better than Stevie Ray was. Well, I don't even know that. I think Stevie Ray is a better talker. Well, Booker her. T's a good talker. In this role, he's not as good. No. He's a better talker when he's talking about himself and what he's going to do with somebody else than he is talking about other people. He's not great about putting other guys over on a stick, that's what you're saying. Yeah. Exactly. He's he doesn't he's not working out as the the GM, which you know from what I understand they're only temporary anyway. Oh, but yeah. but speaking of debates, we had a really good debate on our last question of the week. We got a lot of good answers from some of our friends out there. The question was, what do you think the best wrestler in a star and role in a movie was? Now here's some of the answers we had before we get into ours. Um, the first one is from our buddy Mask Tweeter. Though he didn't star in it, Jesse Ventura in The Predator was damn good. I'd have to agree. I mean, I think he is one of the stars. He's one of the... He's the third biggest name in the movie. Yeah. And he's got a lot of face time in the movie. I like the role. I like the movie. It's a classic movie. Oh, yeah. And he added to the movie. He didn't detract from it. Well, I like his other choice, too. He says he still likes Body Slam with Roddy Piper and Tonga Kid. Yeah. And that was a you know classic movie also. Yeah, it was a good movie if you've never seen it. It's basically a... A cheesy 80s, you know, got the montages and everything in it. But it had a lot of cameos of, of featured had Hall of Famers. Had Lou Albano in there, Ric Flair, Bruno San Martino was in it, The Barbarian, and some other guys that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head. But it was it was a good movie. I really liked it at the time. I haven't seen it in about 15 years, so I don't know how well it still holds up. 
Uh, it had uh, the other star in the movie was a uh, face from the A Team. I forget what his real name is, but the original A Team, the TV show, Face was the other star. It was a really good. I liked it. It was came out at the height of Roddy Piper's popularity. And then we had um, our buddy Lou from over at the Deadly Sands uh, gave us the Rock and Be Cool. I thought it was a really good role. Um, it was one of the first rock roles where he's playing a pure comedy act. I thought he did really good in it. I liked it. I liked his interaction with Vince Vaughn in the movie. Like, yeah, him and Vince Vaughn work great together. Yeah, and it was just funny. He was funny in it. I don't think he quite had a big enough role to be a, considered a star role, but it was a good role. Then our buddy uh, Panda Bear, Paul Pickett, he gave us Roddy Piper and They Live, which I think is a classic... A classic movie, a classic sci-fi movie, um, easily Roddy Piper's best best oh, role. Oh, by far. And probably one of John Carpenter's best movies, other than maybe Halloween. I'll go with you on that one. I, I, I was very, I, I was always that's one of my favorite movies. It's it's a really good movie, and there's a lot of it's a classic movie, classic lines such as I'm here to kick ass and chew bubblegum, and I'm all out of bubblegum. That was horrible. I, well, I wasn't really ready for it. You really kind of effed me on that one. But anyway, it was a good, really good movie. Probably, in all honesty, one of the better ones. Um, our friend Never Meant to Fade gave us Hulk Hogan and No Hope Holds Barred. I didn't like the movie so much. I know. What's you, that smell? I know you love that movie. D -d 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 Duty. <laughs> when he holds a guy in the air. <laughs> I only watched it once because oh, I was just it, not a fan. I went out and bought the movie when it was released. And the thing is, my friend, which don't even like wrestling, he ended up buying it too, just because you know, it was part of a childhood. You know, it's one of those things that you know you want to just relive once in a while. And it was it was a pretty good movie. And then, and then our friend Coma Black gave us two picks. He said a uh, Big Show as in Knucklehead, which I thought was funny. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. It starred the uh, guy from Royal Pains with him. Mm -hmm. And then Glenn Jacobs Kane and See No Evil. Now that's not a movie I haven't seen. I've seen personally. I know you really like it. I've heard really good things about it. I just haven't gotten around to seeing it yet. So what's your pick? Um, be honest, uh, I've been I've been going back and forth with it. It'd be easy to just side with Paul, and that's probably would be my honest opinion. They live with Paul, but just to give it a little bit different, I like I really like The Rock and um, Walking Tall. I think that's the best of the Rock movies that he's put out so far. I liked it. I liked the. Um, I like Johnny Knoxville's part. I like the rock in it. I like the, I don't really know what the guy's name is, but the guy that played the, the bad guy. Yeah, he was good, too. I thought it was good. Also, another one that's um, good, Stone Cold and the Condemned. Yes. Kind of a Ray Liotta, No Escape ripoff movie, but... That's, like, and that's one of my favorites, too. A wrestler or non-wrestler, it was, it was an awesome movie. My pick, though, it wouldn't be that one. That, that's maybe a close second or third. My pick would be Kane... Glenn Jacobs and See No Evil. I thought he did excellent. Cause I like horror movies, and I thought he did excellent in it. And like I said, my same friend that went and bought The No Holds Barred, we actually went to the theater and saw this movie because it was in li limited release. Remember back when it knew yeah. it? And we actually, actually, one of the one of the few limited release movies that ever came to our town. And we saw it, and I was very impressed. Kane did great as the boogeyman in the movie, not not uh, the boogeyman in WWE, but the boogeyman, yeah. you know, the bad guy. He, he made that character, as, I would say, as iconic as anything like Jason or Freddy, Freddy but it, it was good nonetheless. I mean, he was somebody that stood on his own. He wasn't just a regular B-movie villain. I, I hear good things about him. One day I'm going to actually watch it. Now, coming off of that, our question of the week for this week is, who do you think the best tag team specialist is? A guy that's... Primarily known for their work in tag teams, not necessarily a guy that was a single star that's been put in tag teams, but a guy that's primarily you would know as a tag team wrestler. If you think of this guy, you would think of a tag team. Now, let us know what you guys think. Hit us up on Twitter. Hit us up on our Facebook. Put the comments down where? Down there. Down there below the... <laughs> below this video. Let us know what you think. I have to give him that spot every week. It's all he has. Then he does that silly swing of the bat, like oh. he's Albert Pujols, but... No, I wouldn't be that guy. Thank you, Aaron. Jesus. If I'm going, I want to be the best. Larry Bonds broke his records. Yeah, on steroids. Anyway. <laughs> there's, there's no asterisks, GR. Uh, I wish there was. But anyway. There's just plenty of assholes. And after that, we had the um, 
the Tensai versus Ryback match. I had a little bit of high hopes going in to see how Ryback could wrestle a guy like this. My first question to you, right off the bat, do you think Tensai did weighted Ryback? I think he did. I really did because on Friday night, he was able to hit the move on him with no problem. And then on this, now I don't know if SmackDown they edited it where he missed it a couple times before he hit it, well, but on this he couldn't, he tried twice and couldn't. You could tell Ryback was legitimately pissed though because he looks down at him and calls him stupid. I don't know if that was just part no, of the character. No, that's part of that as a gimmick I, too. Well, I think maybe he fit that in, maybe he was just still pissed because he looked pissed in his face. And But I, I do like the idea of using the clothesline as a finisher because he did use that when he was Skip Sheffield. And that's like what we were talking about earlier, having an alternate finisher for guys that you just can't pick up. I mean, Ryback is legitimately a strong dude, don't get me wrong, but there's going to be guys like Tensai, sure. like Brodus Clay, the big show, that he's not going to be strong enough to pick up, and that's no knock on him. These guys are just massive dudes. I mean, you know, you got some of the strongest guys ever. Scott Steiner had trouble picking up the big show, and he's, he was a genetic freak. Yes. Aided well, by Steiner. Well, like you, like you said earlier with Nash using the big boot, I remember back in the day the reason that Shawn Michaels started using a super kick more was because he had that back suplex, but there was a lot of guys he couldn't hit it on because he was only like 230 pounds. But it was, it was a decent match. It had that controversial part in it. I do think that Tensai stiffed him for whatever reason. Either Ryback stiffed him during the match, he deadweighted him, or there's some heat between them somewhere. I think there's a reason behind it. Now, on that, we had E versus Beth, your normal Divas match, nothing special. Just getting her money out of Beth before she's gone. Yeah, and then we had a Santino versus Slater. Slater brought out his cronies, Drew McIntyre and Jinder Mahal, um, that are this group called Encore. I think they're kind of, as a group, they're kind of underwhelming. To me, you got to make an impact right off the bat, or I don't care about them. Who do you think right now that if they were to attack somebody, who do you think would be the person to attack? I mean, I would do somebody like Cena or Orton, or even Sheamus. I would do Orton, really, because he don't have—he's not really having a, a feud with anybody right now except for Del Rio. Right or now. even, it, or even somebody like that that they're wanting to turn face Del Rio or The Miz. Mm-hmm. Make him a face by having these guys. I think The Miz would be a good idea right there. That would yeah. turn him face. Exactly, and it looks like they're going that way anyway. So why not? Why not build this this group up, see how far they could go? I mean, they pushed the core to the top, and th I think this is a better grouping than the core was. Even though yeah. I did like some of the wrestlers of the core better than some of these guys. Yeah, well, the core was just whatever they had left over from Nexus. Yeah. You know, Nexus was Vince, one of Vince's better creations. And then we had a, after that match, uh, I think the best match of the night: Sheamus versus Damian Sandow. Both guys got a chance to shine during the match, which was really good. The only thing I didn't like was the finish where he booted Bo Sandow and Cody Rhodes in the head. The 80s era finish? Yeah. It, I didn't like that so much. I thought it was a decent match. Both guys looked really good. They looked like a million bucks. Um, Sheamus, when put in a certain matches, he really looks good. And in other matches, he really looks bad. This is one that he looked good in. Uh, he works well with Del Rio, even though we're bored of that pin. Exactly. He, he worked well with... Um Brian. I mean, Brian brought a lot out of him. Well, who couldn't work well with Daniel Bryan? Exactly. Um, and I think right now that it actually is bringing Sandow back up. And then after that, we had the the JR Appreciation Night, and who would have thunk it? Someone comes out to screw with JR. CM Punk. CM Punk comes out, takes JR's hat, stomps on it, and basically the underlying theme is all the legends are wanting CM Punk to challenge Cena at Hell in the Cell. He's already beat him. You know, he's beat him numerous times give someone else a shot the guys in out injured you got some perfectly good guys backstage right now that could be in the main event against him but no it's got to be freaking john cena yeah. sick of them and, and they're pushing him down our throats again and again put ziggler in a match i don't care put somebody else i, I mean anybody a ryback even even though I don't, I think the interaction they're doing with punk and ryback's a little bit too rushed into ryback's career mm -hmm. The thing that made Goldberg so big was in the beginning during when he was building up the streak, the NWO was the highlight of the show. Mm -hmm. They didn't push him to the top till almost a year and, and a half later. And he didn't face none of the NWO. No, he fought guys like Hugh Raven, Morris, Raven's Flock. The Flock, you know, Glacier, Mortis, all them guys that really they had nothing to do with, so they might as well job them out to him. Exactly. Then, I mean, it was a decent segment. So what CM were, Punk and, and JR are decent talkers. They carried it well. I, I, th I thought it was a very good segment. I thought it was very pl well planned out, and I liked where 
Ryback did do the save, which would have been better with Stone Cold, but what can we say? And then after that, we had a Alberto Del Rio versus Kofi Kingston. I liked it. It was a really decent match. Kind of short. Nothing special. Yeah, they shortened it out. From what I read, though, that a lot of the a lot of the matches had to be cut down for timing issues. They have three hours. Well, they tried to fit too much into it, and I don't know who went over or where they went over, but that was one that it seems like they cut down. And after that, we had our main event: Kane and Daniel Bryan versus Punk and Ziggler. Z- hell no. Ziggler walked out on Punk just like Punk did a couple weeks ago to Ziggler. Now this would be one of the first times I, I think Punk or Kane is the first. Or this is the second time Kane's pinned Punk since he's been a world champion. I think Kane's the only person to have a, a pin over him. I think Brian did on, on one of the Monday Night Raws too when it was a non-title match. Yeah. But it was a decent main event. I liked it. Um, these are four guys that I'm really that are really <laughs> top of the card right now, and it really it really shows when you got these guys in there together that how good they work well with the how good they work with each other. So right now, who, who in your opinion should be the heel of the week? Um, I want to give it to I want to give it to um, Antonio Cesaro. And that's that was what I was figuring for the impressive showing with uh, Brodus Clay during the show. I think that was uh, by far he was I, a close second would be um, Damian Sandow. Yes. And Co- him and Cody Rhodes together as a team. I'll, I'll go with you on that one. I I, I was very, very impressed with Cesaro. And any closing things? Yeah, basically, that's all we have to say about this. Remember, um, this is Fra- Wednesday, so check out tonight. Uh, if you have eye on television, new show WWE main events coming on. I forget if it's 8 or 9 o'clock, but everybody's got a program guide. Check out your program guide. Champion You'll be able versus to find champion. It. Yeah, Sheamus vs. Punk's the main event on the show. We read the spoilers, but we're not going to say it, so we don't spoil it for you guys. But check that out. Give it a shot. I'm, I'm going to be interested to see how it plays out, if it's going to be like superstars where the first couple weeks they have big stars and then they just make it a job or show. Yeah, probably not going to happen. But anyway, that's basically all I have to have for this week for the WWE show. I'm George Coles. Gary Rhodes. And this has been Heel Heat.